Hey, what's going on? It's Blendon with another video for you. How to make a living without a job. Something that I'm getting ready to jump into in a course. I actually started for the people in Hustle University. And, oh, before I get too deep, if you like the content of this channel, and I know you will, just tap that, or it's around here somewhere, tap that little button, and you will be golden. What I want to talk about today is many people get making a living without a job somewhat twisted they look upon it as some mystical thing because typically you have a job and that's how you make a living but the thing is you need income you need consistent income to make a living without a job one of the things that people miss like take the deal with uber there's a lot of backlash there are people unhappy there are people who are saying hey you know they're screwing us Really what's happening is market forces are kicking in. And that's all it is. Market forces are kicking in. I really expect another two competitors to come into the market pretty strong. When I don't know, but I think they're coming. Because there's a lot of money out there. And that's one of the things you have to realize. I look at it in my short time that I was doing it to get the research for the book. I look at it as a fantastic opportunity. And I will probably continue to do it part-time just for the stories for the second book. I don't know if it's going to be called If Leather Could Talk or Backseat Confessions. But just in a few weeks, the information that I've gotten is just enough. I mean, it's enough for two books. But that's my business, putting out books, writing content creation. But for those of you who are looking to increase your income, it's a great hustle. And if you want to really elevate your game... It's a hustle you could turn into full-time income if you wanted to take those steps. Now, this is where we get into the, the nitty-gritty of making a living without a job. Those necessary steps. I know someone who thinks very highly of himself, and he drives a truck. Well, one of my consulting clients also drives a truck, and he came to me because he was watching the channel and he was just like, hey, what can I do to get out of this truck? I said, well, why don't you, you know, hire a driver for your truck? Oh, man, that's just too much work. You got to keep up with people. I said, okay, stop. Just stop right there. You just said being able to make money, be at home with your family is too much work. That's what you just said. And he said, no, I, I said, yes, you did. It's too much work. You are afraid that you don't have the ability to manage people. And I understand. I can tell you, you will probably make mistakes when you do it. There will be some things. <clears throat> so the guy goes ahead and he buys a consultant package. And we go ahead and he starts doing the things to get his own authority. And he, you know, he's been ride, riding for a while and he knows people so he was able not to get one truck but able to get three trucks got some guys he know they're driving part time full time and I told him something I said pay him more than anyone pay your guys more than anyone else and this is where you will make your money because you have three trucks even if you you know it, it doesn't have to be massively more than anyone else because people will jump ship for you know 25 cents more per hour they will so you know, about a dollar or some, you know, just somewhere like that. He, he followed my advice, created his own authority. Now, the reason I'm going back to the person who thinks so highly of themselves, never in 10 years or 12, well, I don't know, however long he's been driving, has ever thought to create his own authority. But my client who created his own authority, when he got to making a living without a job, he, he got that mindset right, he quadrupled his income by raising his level of BS management. Whenever you start a business, whenever you are the conductor, the organizer, the level of BS, the level of hassle, the level the level of things that you must do to make that thing work, it goes dramatically up for a short period of time. And when I say a short period of time, it might be a year or two, maybe less. And you go through this point of grooming and teaching yourself how to be a manager and learning from other people because that's where you make your money on the management side and when you start thinking in terms of 
income and creating the sources of income and what you have to do to create that income then the game changes because let's you know just throw out uh, a stack what I call a uh, income stack another one of my clients he has a resale business but he was having problems sourcing getting the stuff he wanted because he likes to deal with the nicer stuff he doesn't like dealing with all the what he call the 10 20 he, he doesn't like to deal with this stuff so he likes to deal with the two three four five six seven eight hundred thousand dollar items but if you are a reseller you know that stuff can tend to sell a little slow well I said okay what you do is you know tell me about yourself because this is one of the things with the selling packages people like oh god you know 450 bucks uh, 500 bucks now that's just too much when you come to me and say, hey, Glennon, I want you to help me do X, Y, and Z, but you don't give me any background information, then it's kind of hard for me to analyze, put some stuff together for you, and create something that works for you. Because everyone is unique, whether they want to be unique or not. Everyone has a different situation. So when you go ahead and make that determination, to step out of the box, to raise your game, to think differently, like this person did, I found out some very interesting things. This person had some property left to them. Two houses in the boonies. He lived in the boonies, but they were about 45 minutes from where he lived. Two houses. No one else in the family wanted them. I was like, what are they? He took pictures of them. I was like, dude, Airbnb. He's like, what's that? I was like, you don't know. So, got them on Airbnb. Got him doing some Craigslist, never did Craigslist. So essentially, <clears throat> he had assets and resources that were able to generate income that he did not know about because he wasn't well versed in what's all what's out here available. And that's what many people, because you always hear this, it's like, oh, that's common sense. It's not really that hard. If you know it's not that hard. If you've ever been trying to play, like move a latch or something, like you gotta stick something through a door and move a latch, if you know exactly where that point is, where you touch it and it moves, it's real easy and it's very simple. But if you don't know where that latch is, you could fumble around all day and may never still get in. And that's where many people are. They, it's not rocket science, but many people don't read, they don't research, they don't stay on top of this stuff. So Airbnb, uh, some other stuff that I recommended to him, it created three other additional sources of income. He was able to you know, continue to resell and stick to his price. He had the ability to wait folks out, do what he needed to do, because he had other sources of money coming in. Like, you know, take my case. A lot of my newer stuff's not on Amazon yet. It will go there at some point, but what I'm doing is the hard work of management. Same thing I'm telling you about is building stuff, creating stuff, looking at how can I manage this now, and you know right now, I'm working much harder than I did before, but there's a purpose to that endeavor. There's a purpose to that work. And that's what you have to look at, because you know this brings me to another segment of making a living without a job. If you're doing something brand new, if you're doing something unfamiliar to you, the money may not come as soon as you hope. If you're doing a service type business, you can make money that day. If you're doing reselling or flipping, trading, or something like that, the money may not come for weeks or weeks or months, or maybe in some cases years, just depending on what you're doing and what how you're trying to set yourself up. But you got all this stuff that's going on out there that people are a little confused because it's not rocket science, it's not overly complicated. But once again, going back to what I said about the latch, if you don't know where to go, what the deal is, it could be rocket science. It could be the same because when you don't know and you don't have access, you don't have the resources, you don't um, know where to go, know what to do, know what to say, know the right person to ask, it's a, it's a problem. It is, it's a problem. And many, many people are there because going back to another part going to another third point tribalism expectations and culture i spoke about it many times on this channel and when i put it in uh, hustlers university what was your biggest challenge 
about 75 percent 75% of the people said family lack of support <clears throat> I mean I know what that feels like because when you do something different that is not inside the confines of a job people think I've been called a criminal I'm not kidding you because I do not have a job and I seem to be able to generate enough money to live a good life I must be a criminal not the fact that I spend hours a day writing stuff creating books creating po no 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 it's just like people are so indoctrinated in the only way that you can make money is to have a job that they miss another way to make money is to create a business that creates jobs I mean seriously you're a small business owner you have four or five employees you've got a good product you might do gross 500 700 maybe a million a year net out at 200 250 that's an awesome living for becoming a manager and that's the thing many people do not want to become managers they do not want to deal with the headaches of employees they do not want to deal with the stress of becoming an entrepreneur or a hustler because it's stressful because your income is not consistent you know one week you might make 150 next week you might make 2,000 but usually those are pipelines and sales issues because if you're prospecting qualifying pitching if you if you keep that cycle going you, you're not gonna have those big swings like that because typically if you're in a sales oriented position or you are selling stuff and you just feast or famine when I hear that that tells me you don't know how to create a sales process because if you create a sales process it's not gonna be feast or famine it'll be one week 500 next week 650 then next week it may be 800 you know you'll trend it up because you're going out there and I'll tell you something that I did with the uber thing that was really interesting and I'll tell you exactly how I did it I noticed that something <clears throat> that uber isn't really they're not pushing they're pushing the DUI avoidance you know they take pride in that and actually I think they really are doing that there are many people who probably are not crashing or killing someone because they're gonna take uber to go get drunk many of them are already drunk before they even go get drunk so they're gonna go get drunker and there's another segment that I saw and I just threw a pitch to a couple in the car and um, they thought about it and they bought it and I was able to make some money outside of uber using uber as a lead generator now this is one of the reasons I want you to really hear me about this really really listen to me if you have a w-2 mentality and you're going into uber you're gonna do it way wrong you're gonna look at it way wrong because you're gonna feel entitled you're gonna feel that somehow something's wrong because you are not getting what you want as a, as a driver for uber a partner as it's called you're an independent contractor and you need to think how can I make this work for me times three times one is I get in the car and I drive that's that's it that's times one times two is I get in the car I drive hey what can I do to make this work a little better for me and then times three is pitch somebody something I mean you've got them in your car for 15 20 30 minutes you just you know think of something that you could pitch someone uh, I made amazing contact with someone I would have never met otherwise got her information and uh, we're supposed to be sitting down talking about some writing stuff so for me the the money I mean it I got paid to research for a book how awesome is that that's how I looked at it versus all of this other stuff yes the, the rates are gonna go down and yes there will be more problems and yes there's some funky things about uber but if you are an entrepreneur or a hustler and you've been doing that for a while those things don't phase you because that's almost part of every business you've been a part of it's always gonna be something funky there's always gonna be something that you don't like about it there's always gonna be something that's gonna drive you crazy but you have to look at the trade-off I do that stuff I deal with the hassles I push myself I make sales pitches I get turned down I'm told no more than I'm told yes but the net trade-off and this is what a guy who's extremely wealthy because I researched him he was sitting right there he said time is the most time and freedom are the most abundant forms of wealth that you can generate for yourself when you control your time you become rich and this is what a rich guy was saying and this I mean you know financially rich because there's many ways of being wealthy there's emotional wealth there's uh, you know time to me time is the greatest form of wealth there is you that's my trade-off it's like I do that to get this 
many of you are looking to do as least as possible and get as much as possible. And if it doesn't happen, you know, it's a sham. It's, I've been bamboozled. I've been hoodwinked. It's so wrong. No, it's the way that you fucking think that's wrong. That's the problem. The way that you think is wrong. The way that you uh, look at this stuff and really, really expect the world to ingratiate itself to you versus you ingratiating yourself to the world is creating these mental hiccups and breakdowns because there's a, check it out, there's Uber and Uber people net and there's a lot of awesome information if you want to sift through all the stuff, but there's a great deal of complaining because I want you to think about this and if you go back to uh, some other videos, if you were in charge of a company and you saw your revenue starting to go downward because someone came into the market with a similar product. I mean, let's just say apples to apples. Apples to apples. What are you going to do? You're going to match their pricing because people, I can tell you, people shop on price. Like the rich guy that was right there, he got Uber X. And for those of you that don't know, there's four levels of Uber, actually six, but only four in most of America. And Uber X is the cheapest one. This is what people do. They'll tell you. It's like, hey, I'm going to go this way. I'll look X. And sometimes they'll do XL or SUV or this other stuff if there's no X available. So you got to look at that. You got to really, really look at that. So people really, really hunt in on price more than they do on service unless they're just that kind of person. Everyone is not about service. It's like, hey, if I can get something clean that works at a good price, I'm, I'm there. I'm there all day. So when you're like making a living without a job, you have to sharpen your mind first. And that's why I've got this course called Mentally Becoming a Boss. You know, some people kind of laugh at it, but that's, and I've talked to other business owners, that is one of the hardest transitions there is. It's uh, extremely, extremely challenging for many people to make that change, for people to actually look at that trajectory of, I'm no longer an employee, I'm an employer, I'm a business owner. For some people, it's downright scary because there are certain aspects, there's no certainty. It's just, a, it's very uncertain. It's very uh, turbulent at times in the stress level. And that's another thing. You've got to ask yourself, if you want to be an employer versus an employee, how much stress can you deal with? Because that's a, that's a big part of it. And now the thing with stress is as it comes on, you adapt. So the stress that used to freak you out and say year one, it won't even phase you in year two. And the stress that freaks you out in year five, it won't even phase you in year 10 because you've been through some things. And it's like going to the gym. You know, you get stronger, your stress muscles get stronger, you're, you become wiser and you, your ability to deal with strange situations don't freak you out. And that is a serious, serious skill set to have, to be able to manage crazy stuff, not lose your mind, not become an alcoholic, not become a drug addict, stay simple and sane and be able to impact your business and move forward. That's a hell of a skill set to develop. And I think many people can develop it. I think it's just a matter of putting yourself out there for those processes and changes to occur. And that's one of the biggest things, you know, which brings me to another part, fear. If you let fear rule you, that is an ugly kingdom to be living in. It's ugly. It's like, well, if I do this and it may fail, that's very valid. It might fail. But if it does fail, the lessons you learn could be invaluable. Also, transitioning from employee to employer. I never recommend anyone quit their job to go ahead and just start hustling. You know, I've had many people that I've had to talk off of the ledge because of that, because they were so ready to get out there. They were so ready to do the thing. that it's like, I got to quit this job. I no, don't quit your job. I got a video about that because it's going to, this is transition. I mean, I was thrown to the wolves. Um, 
Essentially, I was thrown to the wolves. I didn't have a choice in the matter. I had, I was like, hey, you got kicked out the plane. They threw me some chips and said, okay, you can eat the chips and pickles on the way down. Hopefully, you will fashion yourself a parachute before the ground comes up and says hello. And I, you know, I fell. I, I took some lumps. I took, I took some punches. Life left me some black eyes. So I don't really advise the baptism by fire methodology. All right? <laughs> you, know, if you got a way to do it that's not going to leave you looking kind of crazy. I would suggest you do that. Now, on the other hand, if you got kicked out of the plane and they didn't even give you any chips and pickles, hey, you got to do what you got to do. But that transition is very important. It's not something to be overlooked. It's not something to marginalize or to even say that, hey, you know, I can um, really get past this or I can really not, you know, this is not that big of a deal. It is a big, big deal. It's huge. It's freaking huge. It's amazingly huge. But if you want to make a living without a job, you have to first understand that it is possible to make a living without a job. The number of people who say having a business is risky, then go to a job that was created by someone who created the business cracks me up. If having a business is risky, then would not working for a business be risky? I mean, seriously, you can't have one without the other. And right now there's a great deal of risk in some sectors, many sectors, really. But essentially, that's the reason I'm putting together this course, making a living without a job. You know, I started it earlier this year and now I've really got some cool, awesome, effective information for you. And it stuff jumps off this Friday, which would be October the 30th, I believe. So we got that going now. Because essentially, you have to really, really reframe your mind to reframe your life. And many people are trying to create a new life with old mindsets. It's just not going to work. So with that, just some things for you to chew on, some things for you to look at. And uh, I will see you on the good side. If you want to be part of making a living without a job, just tap that. It's around here somewhere. And you can get in on the pre-order. And I might throw in a free month for Hustle University. I might not. I have not decided. So I do know this, that once the course is completed, the price will go up. <laughs> you better get in now. All right. This is Glendon. I'll see you on the good side.